Artificial intelligence. How? Skynet. Terminator. Traffic lights. Reservations. Finding Waldo. These are all perceptions and uses of artificial intelligence in our modern world. They range from practical, to silly, to apocalyptic, and everybody has their own idea of what artificial intelligence, or AI, is. We've all heard the term before, and we've all probably used Google, Alexa, or something similar, but what does it actually mean? The dictionary definition is, the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. Put simply, AI is the ability of computers to do things that normally only humans could do. Recognizing images, understanding speech, and making complex decisions are all examples of this, and are all things that we've had a reasonable amount of success with teaching computers to do. From this success, we've built things like Google Images, Amazon Alexa, self-driving cars, and other things, businesses, and tools. However, the first thing that usually comes to mind when you hear artificial intelligence isn't always the most appealing. Pop culture in the news often casts this technology in an apocalyptic light, and they're right to do so when talking about general AI, aka the Terminators and Agent Smiths of the world. This is the AI that Elon Musk and others warn us about. However, I can assure you, we are nowhere near that level of complexity. Your Alexa won't turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger anytime soon, and I don't see Siri conquering the world in the near future. These are real questions people have asked Siri and real responses she's given. Future overlord, not yet. Not only is AI safe to use right now, but it is also extremely accessible. It isn't something to be left to the Googles and Amazons of the world. It isn't something scary we should avoid. And it certainly isn't going to destroy all of our jobs or civilization right now. Rather, it is a tool for the public good, like the internet itself. Something we can all use in our businesses, nonprofits, and science projects. When I started programming, I'd always been enamored by the technologies of the day. How is it that IBM's Watson is able to do all that it does? How does Elon Musk's car not crash? How do those pesky chatbots work? I wanted to build something of my own, my own AI, and I wanted to teach it to do something. I wanted to join this fantastic world of the tech giants, and every time I read about the latest product or service from Silicon Valley, I thought to myself, I want in. So I got to work, and it was really scary at first. Let's get back to what AI is on a more technical level. AI is a computer program that has the ability to make decisions without needing an insane amount of code. When you're making Siri, for example, you can't possibly pre-plan every question, accent, or pattern of speech that could be encountered by the system. Instead, you build an AI to handle all of that for you, which comes in two parts. The brain algorithm and the teacher algorithm. The brain thinks for you, and the teacher teaches the brain how to think. After teaching myself the finer details of these two components, I decided I was going to make my own brain and build my own teacher to teach it. But I needed a task. What would I want it to do? Because intelligence is pretty useless if it isn't doing anything or learning something. After a bit of YouTube browsing, I settled on the old game Snake. You all remember Snake, right? If not, here's a quick refresher. The world is a grid. You are a snake. You can only move horizontally or vertically along this grid. Your goal is to eat the food, which makes you longer, and if you hit yourself or the world's edge, game over. These fixed rules make building snake very simple. After building it, I needed to build the brain that controls the snake. I settled on using a digital version of an actual brain called an artificial neural network. Now what this is, is exactly what it says on the tin. A network of artificial neurons. Think of it as a digital brain doing lots of little bits of math just as actual neurons do. The network takes its input in its input layer, which for humans would be like our senses, processes it in hidden layers where it thinks, and gives an output, in this case, which direction the snake should go in. Each neuron plays a part in decision making, and all the individual layers of neurons communicate with each other to take steps towards the final decision. In much the same way that pathways in our brain or muscles get stronger the more we use them, we weight connections, making real decisions possible. And with decision-making comes AI. Now that we have our brain, 
We need to teach it how to think so that the decisions it comes to actually make sense. This is where our teacher algorithm comes in. Our teacher algorithm, what's called a machine learning algorithm, uses evolutionary learning to teach the AI, which works in much the same way that natural selection works in nature. The teacher starts off by creating a bunch of random snake brains. They all play the game. The best are selected to move on and mate. And with each successive generation, they get progressively better at the game. Here's a short video of some snakes from the first generation with no training. I would say it's okay, but it's really not. Generation five. And generation 20. This is the power of AI technology. And it just goes to show what you can accomplish after just two hours of training. Becca, that's cool and all, but how? If you want to build something of your own with AI, there are two things you'll need to do. First, you'll need to learn to code. Pretty simple, right? But actually it is. There are numerous free online resources for doing this, from Khan Academy to Code.org, and these days anyone with motivation can do it. And the doors it opens, both career-wise and innovation-wise, make it well worth the time. Second, You'll need to learn the finer details behind the brain and the teacher algorithms. There are countless YouTube videos and blog articles online explaining it, and these days it's just as accessible to the contemporary learner as the Discovery Channel or Animal Planet. MIT even has open courseware where you can view full-length MIT lectures and even assignments for free. With all of the abundant resources available, AI is no longer out of reach. Anyone can build with AI, and nearly anything can be built with it. But there's a catch that we cannot ignore. It's a ton of work. <laughs> sure, it may have only taken my program two hours to learn to play Snake, but I clocked hundreds of hours building and rebuilding the AI, staring at error messages and crap code. This obstacle, the workload and sort of grasping in the dark that's necessary to learn and build, is the great filter to AI. But what if I told you that no, it isn't? What if I told you that all this heavy lifting and blind prodding, data collection and programming was already done for you, and the only thing you had to do was put together the puzzle pieces into something useful and applicable? Well, do I have news for you? Because through services available from Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and others, everything that would have normally taken weeks can be done in seconds, in one line of code as opposed to many, and at so low a cost that you have to start doing the math in fractions of a penny. No more filter. With such services, you have at your disposal tools that can perform image, text, and speech analysis, that can turn text into speech, have a conversation, translate languages, and even predict traffic patterns, internet hits, or market demand for products. I could go on and on and on, but even if what you want isn't ready to go, it can be easily made with the numerous brains and teachers that are already pre-wired, awaiting your commands. It's nearly drag and drop at this point. With a moderate level of programming knowledge and these tools at your disposal, you can skip the grindstone altogether and instead focus on your idea as a whole, building solutions to problems and creating. This technology, the puzzle pieces and the concepts behind them, are already revolutionizing the world. People are building empires to the skies, changing and saving lives, and doing things that I probably can't even imagine right now. I already told you I'm getting in, and right when I'm done with this, I'm going to get working on a project that I've been thinking about for quite some time now. I'm getting in, and with these tools, now so can you. Thank you. <laughs>